Lieutenant Thornton is in charge, Sergeant. He's in my office. I know it. I will not be made a lame duck by you. If you've got an attitude towards me, fine. But don't take it out of my partner. You're yelling at Michael. You're yelling at me. If we had a dog, you'd be kicking it. I am not shutting down, Mary Beth. I am not running scared. Why don't you worry about the problems in your own relationships? He's your husband, Mary Beth. Nobody's going to do a good enough job. He found out the man was going to the cops, and he stabbed him to death. Unless I deal with this, that is what is going to happen. Wrong answer, Mr. Trey. Yeah, easy, Detective. Here and now, I am ticked. Let's nail this sucker. Smooth sailing from here on in, Mary Beth. The brass is gonna sit up and take notice of this. Chris, you sure you're gonna need all this stuff? First rule of leadership, Mary Beth, be prepared. I thought that was the Boy Scouts. Yeah. You have any idea when the lieutenant's gonna be back? Well, this is something about a special detail, Mary Hush Hush. Yeah, coffee, Sergeant Cagney, no cream, two sugars. Thank you. You know what I always say, a woman's place is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Esposito, cup of coffee for Detective Lacey, please, black. Can do. Thank you. I picked up this book, Gourmet uh, uh, Garnishing for the Working Woman. No, for our dinner party Friday. Oh, yes? This Friday? Me and Harvey, you and David, the double date? Oh, yes. Anyhow, this book, it shows you how you can take squash and make it look like little swans. And your tomatoes, Christine, you can take tomatoes and make uh, them look like a bouquet of roses. Mary Beth, you don't have to make a big fuss. I could feed David Keeler for the rest of his life, Christine, and never fully repay him for saving me from that review board. I, mean, I feel like a criminal not doing it sooner. I should have done it in October, but then uh, you and me got sick and all that business with Harvey Jr. and the holidays. It's soon enough. It's Friday. Right. Excuse me. Sorry, Cagney, but the lieutenant squad reports are due first thing. It could rain paperwork, Coleman. It wouldn't ruin my parade. Yeah, well, good luck behind the wheel. Don't drive us off the cliff. Radio. Home. Thank you. Thank you. Ah! The sweet smell of success, Mary Beth, huh? To us. Nothing wrong with this picture, right? Are you kidding Inspector! Inspector Lacey? Good morning, sir. All right, Cagney, listen, I'm glad I caught you before, well, before you got the wrong idea. The wrong idea, Inspector? Uh, let me introduce myself. Lieutenant Jim Thornton. Lieutenant Thornton? I've heard good things, Detective Lacey. <laughs> and about you too, Sergeant. Oh, well, thank you, Lieutenant. It's nice to meet you. Lieutenant Thornton here will be holding the reins in Samuel's absence. Uh, temporarily, of course. I don't know. I don't understand. He's a top instructor at the Academy. Just submitted a study to the department, the paradigm of the high-tech precinct. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's very interesting, Inspector. And I thought it would be a good time to give his ideas a try around here. Don't you think it would be wiser if you had someone in command who had a working knowledge of this squad, Inspector? I wasn't aware I had to consult a second whip for my administrative decisions. Especially if your second whip is a woman. Lieutenant Thornton is in charge, Sergeant. End of discussion. Jim, Detective. Sir? You 
No, Sergeant, Dad, I don't need this room right away. I could go get a cup of coffee, interface with the squad, familiarize myself. No, no bother. Really, I'll be out of your way in just a minute. in my office. I know it. The second whip always fills the temporary slot. But he's here, Christine. We have to learn to live with it. High tech. Precinct my butt. <laughs> that guy wouldn't recognize a perp if he were handcuffed and had numbers painted across his chest. Christine, one day when you're captain, we'll look back on this and laugh. It's all perspective. My sponsor says to live in the here and now. Well, here and now, I am ticked. Okay, babe, throw the breaker. Okay. Hola. Oh, Harvey. Huh? This is wonderful. You know what would be perfect? I'll pick up amber-colored bulbs. It's such a warm glow. Yeah, I don't know how you stand that midtown gridlock every day, Mary Beth. The week of it, I'm ready to strangle anyone leaning on your horn. Okay, this is how we start. Bright and cheerful with the appetizer, get the conversation going. Yeah, do you know how many permits I needed just to break ground in Manhattan? And deliveries? Forget about it. Well, it'll be nice to watch the numbers add up in the bank, though, huh? Should I make rumaki or pate? Live is liver, whether you wrap it or grind it. I don't know, I'm taking in more, but it doesn't go in my pocket. You should see the rental prices on the equipment. Hey, aren't you the one that always says headaches go with the territory? Yeah. Now, we turn it down a little more uh -huh. for the main course, and we light the candles. Yeah, don't get the scented ones, all right? Then when you find a company that's not committing highway robbery, the equipment is all screwed up. Yesterday, a track on a bulldozer wouldn't move. This morning, a crane wouldn't start. You're right, Hart. Classic white tapers. A little stress goes with success. A little too much with this job. Okay, and what do you think of this for dessert? Hey, don't get too much in the mood here, Mary Beth. This is a thank you dinner, not the grand seduction. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You start playing footsies under the table, and I better feel my toes tingling. Mm-hmm. And this here, that's very romantic. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. Such a tell, Mr. Lacey. <laughs> Good. Is Becky? Jordan. Good. Parasa. Lieutenant, I've been reading your paper, and quite frankly, sir, I can't put it down. This is inspirational. It's illuminating. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, Detective Esposito, isn't it? E-S-P-O-S-I-T on this. Good. Sergeant Caggy, a moment with you about assignments, please. Detective Lacey, excellent. Sit down, Detective. Let's file this under BS, huh? Did you see how fast he went through these activity reports? Would have taken seven. It was twice the time. I don't trust any cop who carries a gun in a briefcase. Or carries a briefcase. Excuse me. I'm looking for Victor Isbeck. In the flesh. How can I help you? My name is Mordechai Spekovich. I'm your cousin from Tel Aviv. Look, this is absolutely ridiculous. Both my parents were Catholic. Victor, why would I lie to you? You and me are the end of the line. We are all that's left of our family. Mister, this is a pretty sick joke. My father did not have any brothers or sisters. You wanted nothing to do with my father. You see, when the Nazis came into Poland, our grandfather, Joseph, was killed by the Gestapo. Your father and my father watched him die. After Joseph's death, your father insisted the rest of the family flee to America. My father thought it wouldn't last, that they would be safe. My father died during the war. 
your father came here, got married, had you? He was Catholic. I saw his old passport. Probably bought it on the black market. They were blocking the exit of Jews. Victor, I wouldn't have come at all, but you see, last year my mother, God bless her, passed away. Then I learned of your mother's death too. We are just you and me. I am merely suggesting that there may be an alternate, potentially more effective means of approaching any given case. Well, if you would merely peruse your data, I think you would see that this squad is doing fine just the way it is. Are you saying there's no room for improvement? You're probably wondering what we're doing on this pathetic case. Now you're thinking, why did my partner, a reasonably bright woman who saw a future in the police department, get us assigned to the silliest, most insignificant case since Aunt Tilly lost her wedding ring? I was sure you'd get around to filling me in. Yeah, well, when an overeducated potato like Thornton tells me that our precinct appears lax and old-fashioned, I get a little excited. Lax, Mary Beth, can you believe that? I lost my wedding ring once down the sink in the old apartment, and Harvey had to take apart all the pipes. There's no and substitute and for procedure, he said. Detectives don't use the full resources of their department, only on the flashy cases, he said. The little cases, well, you handle them out on the streets, and then you lose them in a file room. We do all tend to jump at the homicides, so I leaned over that desk that he has no right to sit behind, and I said, flashy cases and little cases, we handle them all the same in this squad, and we handle them out on the street, because that's how real police work is done, not in front of some sickly green computer screen. Right, this ought to be his corner here. Give me the first uncleared case you can punch up, I said, and Detective Lacey and I will solve it out on the streets long before you can rearrange your floppy disks. So he punched, and uh, here we are. Mr. Romanos, NYPD, sir. You reported a missing hot dog cart. I told you once, I told you twice, Michael. I don't want to hear any more excuses. Get to your room. What is going on, Harvey? I come home from work. The kid has got every light in the house on. I could hear you all the way out in the driveway. Who do you think is paying the bills around here, huh? I don't want to hear any more excuses. Honey, please, try not to go crazy. Crazy? Look who's talking. You're burning enough for all of us with your big dinner for the hotshot lawyer. What are you talking about? I'm talking about mood lighting. I'm talking about 80 bucks a piece for champagne. Honey, you told me yourself, get something nice. I mean, David Keeler saved us $5,000. I didn't think you were going to spend it all on dinner, and you shouldn't even be having champagne with Chris here. I asked her already. She, she, she can deal with other people drinking. Is there anything else you'd like to jump down my throat about? Well, it depends on what's next. Maybe you want to redo the wallpaper to match the crown roast. What is with you, Harvey? You're yelling at Michael, you're yelling at me. If we had a dog, you'd be kicking it. Now, this is about more than a, a few extra light bulbs and a fancy dinner. What's wrong, Harv? Nothing. Well, it doesn't look like nothing from my corner of the ring. I don't want to talk about it, Mary Beth. Leave it, okay? Okay. So? What's going on at work? Nothing. I'll handle it myself. Handle what, Harv? Is it labor troubles? Are we going to lose the contract? It's my problem! Honey, if you have a problem, I have a problem, too. I'll deal with it myself! Deal with what, Harv? Deal with what, Harv? So we're up till 3.05 in the a.m., playing 20 questions in every single room in the house. And finally, Harvey lets out that this equipment trouble he's been having looks like a lot more than bad luck. Who's after him? Some contractor and a bid? He doesn't know. But he found water in the gas tank of his skip loader, and it hasn't rained in three weeks, Chris. And somebody stole a pin from a bulldozer track? The list goes on. The question is, who's behind it? The question is, how come he didn't tell me in the first place? How come I had to drag it out of him? Well, it's his world, Mary Beth. It's his domain. He doesn't need his wife running after him, flashing her badge, you know, trying to settle the scores for him. That man can be so pig-headed sometimes. 
not like you. I beg your pardon? How did it end? A draw. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary Beth, I've been thinking maybe tonight isn't the right time for this little dinner party thing. I mean, what, there being trouble in paradise and all. Christine, fair warning. The next person that says one negative thing about my dinner party in honor of David Keeler, attorney at 730 it is. I'm bowled over by your boundless enthusiasm. I'm just thinking about how the conversation's gonna go after we've all agreed that the weather's miserable. Why, you think that Harvey is not scintillating enough for you, Mr. Keeler? I didn't say that. Harvey's a very smart man, Christine. He learned about life by living it. I know he's smart, Mary Beth. It's just that he and David don't seem to have a lot in common. Well, you and I are not exactly identical twins, and we have managed to find something else to talk about besides the weather. You're right. It's gonna be great. Of course it's gonna be great. Unless Harvey goes off on one of his conspiracy theories. As long as David is not his usual argumentative self, it's tough to get Harvey to come up for air once he's on a roll. David would disagree with his own shadow. Cagney, 14th. Yeah, hi, Sharon. What'd you get? You're yeah, kidding. OK. Yeah, thanks. I owe you one. What? Lieutenant Thornton and Inspector Nellman are squash partners. They play every week. Why am I not surprised? Another hot dog cart got ripped off. With my condiments. Oh. You know, Mary Beth, it's the people we work with that make this job so special. Huh. A ham sandwich? Hey, give me that. As a matter of fact, I'll get my wife to get some gefilte fish and potato cool. Don't worry. Hey, Spagovitz, my friend, have I got a deal for you. Not now, Esposito. How to speak Yiddish in six easy lessons available on portable cassette tape. And look, a pillow speaker. Learn to speak while you sleep. Not now, Esposito, huh? I don't want to scare you, Victor, but I hear at your age, circumcision could be very painful. Ooh. Why don't you guys leave me alone, huh? Just a little good-natured razzing, that's all. Well, I don't think it's so funny. My father lied to me. Uh, Sergeant, there's a call you better take. Yeah. The future is here, Mary Beth. A robot wearing a tie marches into our lives and demands our undying loyalty just because he chases a little squash ball around a court. Don't you say he was Ivy League champion? And he always lets Nelman win. You don't believe in playing the game to get ahead, Christine? Well, I don't run around in white shorts saying, great shot. Or you really tore the cover off that sucker. We're supposed to turn left or right? Oh, who gives a rip? Christine left and left again. I tell you, if you listen to Thornton, of course, we're all spinning our wheels because the carts are either in Philly or Boston. That's what his computer told him. Well, well maybe we ought to give Philly and Boston a list of the missing serial numbers. And give Thornton a chance to be right? Besides, what are we supposed to do? Pick up the phone and say, excuse me, could we have a couple of your best detectives crawl around a few hot dog carts? They'll probably look good on paper. First rule of robotics, Mary Beth. Never let the truth get in the way of the facts. Central to car 21. 21K. Your squad informs Central that Detective Lacey's husband has been in a minor accident and is currently being treated at St. Vincent's Hospital. 10 4. Put the bubble on. Send mine, Mary Beth. They always say that. Can't believe I let him go there. You want me to drive? I cannot believe I let him go there when I knew it was going to you want the light, Mary Beth? Did you. Watch the car! Thank you. Relax, babe. Just a few lousy stitches. No big deal. No, it's no big deal. Typical day. Get up in the morning, you go to work, and somebody in a crane dumps a load of lumber on your head. He missed. Who are you trying to kid, Harvey? A guy named Swansky comes onto my site this morning, tries to muscle me in front of my men. Swansky hoped. I don't know, he owns some rental equipment company. Waltz is up to me in a $500 suit, but I could still smell him underneath. Mr. Lacey, wouldn't you rather rent more reliable equipment from my company? Just a matter of time, Mr. Lacey, before you see it my way. I told him. 
I turned down your sky-high bid before, and I'm not changing my mind. Four hours later, this happened. How long has the crane operator been with you? Yeah, it came on temporary when we fell behind. Sure. It's tied to Swansky all along. I'll run them both through the computer. Swansky's not pushing me around, Mary, but he's nothing but a punk on the streets. That ain't kind of rough for a punk, huh? What if you hadn't jumped out of the way, huh? What if you hadn't been so quick? Look at this. It's your favorite work shirt. There's nothing on the crane operator. Probably gave Harvin alias. I'll tell you, the Swansky guy gets around. Racketeering, charges dropped. Criminal damage to property. Tried and acquitted. Murdered. Reduced to manslaughter, charges drop. <clears throat> Let's nail this sucker. You got it, partner. Cagney, 14th. Ah, uh, yes, we'll be right in. Thornton wants to see us. You're familiar with regulations, detective? This is a case involving your own husband. If you participate, it won't make it to court. Court? Excuse me. I would like some consideration here, sir. I am assigning Carassa and Esposito, and I'll make sure it gets top priority. Look, Lieutenant. You've got an attitude towards me, fine, but don't take it out of my partner. Detective Lacey, would you leave us alone for a moment? With due respect, sir, I think it's wrong for you to take this case away from now, me. Now, Detective Lacey. Yes, yeah, sir. If there's an attitude, Sergeant, I'm the one who walked into it. You were acting like you own this place. The de facto lieutenant with her feet up on my desk? Technically, it's Lieutenant Samuel's desk, sir. I will not be made a lame duck by you. A little more experience might make you a little less insecure. Should I put that quote in your jacket, Sergeant? Any more little outbursts like this, and that's exactly where it's going with a reprimand. Are we clear? Crystal. Then let's see some results. Your approach to your uh, hot dog case is going nowhere. Admit it, Mary Beth, you hate him. You hate his guts. If you'd like to time to his computer and pull the switch. Just imagine Thornton, right to a crisp all over the city, the lights dim. Huh? Christine, don't you have something better to do, like pull the wings off a fly? Mary Beth, you're not really serious about going through with this dinner, are you? What? The dinner, Mary Beth? 7.30. Tonight? Christine, it has been a long and difficult day. But not for one moment would I allow myself to be robbed of the happy festive evening that Harvey and I have so eagerly anticipated. We'll be waiting for you. You hate him, don't you? I have a completion bond, Mary Beth. Do you have any idea how much money we would lose? Money? What do I care about the money? I am not shutting down, Mary Beth. I am not running scared. Harvey, are you sure you want to go through with this dinner? Yes. I'm not going to let Swansky ruin our lives. There are guys like him in this business all the time. Every time you move up a rung on a ladder, Mary Beth, there are guys waiting to get a piece out of you. I'm only saying shut down till Manny and Aleph had a chance to make their case. You can't go back to work like nothing happened. Well, maybe I should just pack it all up, huh? Forget about a life for my family. Is that what you want? Because unless I deal with this, that is what is going to happen. Are you putting on a tie, Harvey? Huh? I have worked very hard, Mary Beth, to get to where I am. And I have to decide right now, is the game going to be played by Swansky's rules? Because once you start dancing, Mary Beth, you can't stop the music. Honey, it's 727. David and Christine are going to be here any minute. Yeah, I'm finished dressing. I have finished dressing.
Well, what about the Iran-Contra hearings? Nothing but a total whitewash. Exactly. Do you know about the lawsuit from the Christic Institute? What, are you kidding? Daniel Sheehan, one of my all-time heroes, he's gonna bust that secret team, blow the whole CIA thing wide open. Smuggling cocaine from Costa Rica to pay for arming the Contras. They are hypocrites. Which goes all the way back to Vietnam what about when they the were weather supporting the heroin trade. Further, what about it? The CIA hired those goons when they tried to bump off Castro. I get it. Oh, boy. That was an incredible meal, Mary Beth. Thank you. Chris, we have to get her recipe for crown roast. Mary Beth, your place is so warm. It's homey. You got a nice backyard for a barbecue. Chris? Wouldn't you like a backyard? For what? Yes, sir. Yeah, she likes a late night snack like her daddy. Hi there. I gotta get her something to eat. Who's here? Look who's here. Uh, Could I hold her? Well, what do you say, sweetheart? You want to meet a world-class lawyer? Oh. Say, how do you do? Yeah. How are you doing, little Alice Christine? Huh? Are you hungry? Huh? Oh, look at this. You're a real cutie pie, aren't you? You certainly are. I got an idea. You want to you wanna say hi to your namesake, huh? Hi, Alice. Say hi. Such a beautiful girl. Yes, you are. You are a beautiful girl. Harvey, come and look at this, Harv. Two beautiful girls. Look at this. That could look be your this. kid. No, I mean it. Look, with your hair and his eyes, it could be their kid, Harvey. Oh, look at that. Harvey, come and look at this. Is this the cutest thing you ever saw in your whole life? Like, oh. David hummed the theme from Father Knows Best all the way back to Manhattan. Poor man. He didn't even complain when Alice painted chocolate sauce all over his tie. Did he tell you he's going to the next Democratic Club meeting with Harv? Oh, yes. If I had a kid brother, he'd be playing baseball with him. I think I had him pegged all wrong, Christine. He's a lot more like Bill Cosby than Harry Hamlin. 14, Sergeant Cagney. Hi, Mr. Romanis. Uh-huh. Where? Are you sure? Okay. What? No, 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 no. You let us handle it. All right? We'll be in touch. Okay, thank you. Bye. The hot dog vendor. A very happy man. He saw his cart last night at Sinclair's, an art gallery in Soho. What was it doing there? Dispensing hot dogs, he said. At an art gallery? Sort of reverse chic. They were having an opening, a soiree of some kind. Anyway, they wouldn't let Romanus in. So this morning, he wants to go over with his stevedore cousin, Spiro and Yanni. I told him we'd take care of him. Any substantive response from Philadelphia yet, Sergeant? Unfortunately, Lieutenant, we've been unable to interface with the appropriate hot dog division. We do have a promising lead in Soho, sir. Deny it if you want, Sergeant. The fact is, success in contemporary police work is dependent on telecommunications, not shoe leather. A week served doesn't hurt either. Thank you so much. I never heard an accent quite like that. Prince Philip, by way of Hoboken. Too bad Mr. Romanus didn't spot his cart a little earlier. But it's catering must be pretty busy to truck that cart out last night. You want to check it out, or do we call Philly instead? I have a theory about our Lieutenant High Tech. The longer he keeps me on the squad room phone, the easier it is for him to keep an eye on me. So let's check it out. If they work nights, they open late. They'll see our car. We don't hear from him by noon, we're going back. Newsflash. Barras and Esposito just brought in a crane operator, real name Constantine Festa. Turns out he's got a major yellow sheet. Where is he? Is he going to finger Swansky? Where is he? He's in the interrogation room, but they're not getting anything out of him. You son of a bitch. What's your problem? I hate scum. Swansky put you up to it, didn't he? Yeah, that was an accent. Maybe a hiccup. Who knows? Wrong answer, Mr. Trey again. Easy, detective. Hey, hey, you got nothing on me. Not out of my way, lady. I'm you a free man. Mary Beth. I said try again. Back off, Mary Beth. You see what she did? 
Yeah, you trip. Maybe hiccups. Maybe you find you're accident prone if you don't get the hell out of my face. We gotta get something else. Look, Lacey, I know how you feel. You get Swansky, then we'll talk about how I feel. You're fighting the home team. What else you get? You talk to the other contractors who rent from Swansky. I took Investigation 101. Everybody's afraid to talk. So what are the leads? Mary Beth, what? Leads, detectives, leads. We're doing everything we can. Not good enough. Well, you're way out of line, detectives. Yeah? Then you come up with more than dead ends. We're doing our job. Do it better. You all right? Look at me, I'm shaking here. He's your husband, Mary Beth. Nobody's gonna do a good enough job. Every morning when I walk out the door, I know in the back of Harv's mind is he may never see me again. This morning, I watched Harv walk out the door. I told Carassa I'm in. No. You were not wearing any wire, Harvey. Leonard Swansky murdered a construction foreman. He found out the man was going to the cops, and he stabbed him to death. Mary Beth, the assistant district attorney, said if we can set up a meet with Swansky. Did you go deaf, Harvey? Stabbed him to death. You want to wear a wire and then go testify? This man is a professional. That is exactly right, Mary Beth. And if he is going to get me for going to court, he is going to get me anyway, because I am not giving in. Honey, the department doesn't need you. We do a setup, we do a sting, and we, and we, we put somebody else in. Mary Beth, the police have never been able to make any charges stick. Nobody is willing to stand up to Swansky. Nobody is willing to carry the ball. Yeah? Who elected you, team captain? Oh, Mary Beth, don't insult me. What is it with the men in this family? You got antlers growing on your antlers. What, are you trying to send a message to Harvey Jr.? Yeah, maybe I should have sent them one a long time ago. Huh? Maybe if I hadn't worn the apron so much, he wouldn't have had to leave. That is not true. Mary Beth, no man has the right to do what Swansky is doing to us. I am going to wear that wire. I am going to get that bastard. Okay, put down your donuts. I got breakfast for everyone. What do you got? Soul food. Now you're talking. Slots and bagels. And whitefish. My mouth was rehearsing for grits. Hey, you gotta be open-minded. This is Jewish soul food. Uh, Come on, guys. Eat. I thought you didn't like being Jewish. No, it's the rest of us Jews who aren't too thrilled about having to claim him. You gotta admire him, Mary Beth. How many times have we had people come crying to us for help, and then when we ask them to lift a finger to make the case, they're out the door? So? So, we risk our lives to protect them. It's our job, Christine. Yeah, well, I think maybe we should work together sometimes. Sure, work together. We send somebody into a lethal situation while we sit out in the car drinking coffee. And then if there's any trouble, we rush in, hopefully in time. If for anyone else, Mary Beth, you'd wire him in a minute. It's not anyone else. It's Harvey. We already tried that. Tap his phone. Catch him threatening another contract. We tried that, too. No judge would give us an eavesdropping warrant on the word of only one contract. None of the contractors are willing to make a statement here. They quake in their boots at the very mention we of Swansky. We could set up a sting, sir. It would take too long. This is the best way to get the Swansky before he gets to anybody else. Lieutenant, I think it's a shortcut. And I don't think it's safe, sir. Excuse me, Lieutenant. We're aware of all the risks involved here. And none of us, including Mr. Lacey, would do it if there were another way. We'll have double the usual backups, and the location has excellent access. If Detective Lacey does not feel comfortable with having her husband wired, then we'll have to find another way. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Lacey. We'll do the same for you sometime. I'm sure Swansky sends his gratitude. I 
Aren't you coming to bed? I got work to do. Harvey? Leave me alone, Mary Beth. You've done enough already. guys keep bankers hours. I guess if you're fencing hot hot dog costs to fancy caterers, you can afford to. It's all right. I can wait here all week to serve this warrant. Just to see the look on Thornton's face would make it all worthwhile. I can't blame Harvey for being upset. Did we finish talking about that? Mary Beth, I just don't want to see happen to you and Harvey. What could happen? If you have a point to make, please make it. You're driving a wedge between the two of you. <clears throat> Chris, why don't you worry about the problems in your own relationships? That ought to keep you busy for a while. Nice, Mary Beth. Real nice. What if Harvey kept you from going to work after you were shot? That there has nothing to do with this here. It has everything to do with it. What if he prevented you from going? What if every time he was worried about you, he kept you from walking out the door? And I'm sure there are plenty of times when he wished he could have. Hey, forgive me for trying to protect my own. You're doing more than that. You know Harvey would never keep you from acting on your convictions. Or from being who you are. Harvey Lacey, Harvey Lacey. <laughs> Don't look down at your chest. I know it sounds stupid, but it's easy to do without thinking. Don't talk any louder than normal. We can hear you just fine. And don't go swimming with bow-legged women, right? <laughs> Grace under pressure. Hemingway would be proud. OK, Harvey, get dressed. Yes, sir. I was thinking of taking a little drive past Wonsky's office tonight. Help me in. How are you feeling, Mr. Lacey? Fine, ready. Tad nervous, I bet? Nothing to it. I used to work high steel. Okay, you know the code for trouble? Uh, sure is cold in here. The guys have gone over everything a hundred times. All right, good luck, Mr. Lacey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sergeant Cagney, you've got a minute? Yes, Lieutenant. Kudos for your work on the cart theft, Sergeant. Ah, well, thank you, Lieutenant. It's amazing what a little shoe leather and cop intuition can do. Well, in this case, it got you and Detective Lacey a 4.0 arrest. Actually, Lieutenant, it's not complete yet. We figured that they've probably been running this ring, oh, all over Manhattan. Should wrap up some cases, and I'd say six other precincts. Don't well, forget Philadelphia. What about Philadelphia? Something important, Lieutenant. I'd like to be the judge of that. I mean, all details can be important. Right. Well, it seems that the uh, perps are planning on, on shipping the carts to Philadelphia. So regardless of what you might think, Sergeant Cagney, I'm not a total idiot. Well, nobody's perfect, Lieutenant. I'll see you in the morning, Sergeant. I'll be counting the hours, Lieutenant. Come on, Hob, let's blow this cop shop. I'm ready. Thanks, my brother. Don't worry, he's in good hands. Sure. Be careful, Mr. Lacey. I will, babe. I love you. You know you just said that to Manny and Al? I love you. I was talking with Detective Munchuk. Monks learn to form sentences? Yeah, almost. He's telling me about uh, this Chinese restaurant on the corner, down by the subway. I didn't even know it was there. I mean, I must walk past it every day on my way to work. It's, uh, it's funny how uh, sub's right there. You never even pay attention to it. 
You know, Statue of Liberty, the World Trade Center. Empire State Building used to be. Mary Beth? Huh? It's working. What? Your watch. I'm sure it's working. Yeah. All the stakeout sweeping on? Leaving half sitting at home waiting? Geez, I don't know how he does it. Thanks for hanging in with me, Chris. You bet. Lieutenant Thornton did the right thing backing me up on this. Yeah. He's not the one I should be angry at. He's just an ambitious pawn. It's the old boy network. <laughs> That's why I didn't get the lieutenant spot. That's what happened. I think I can't handle myself. Well, we know different. I may not get my own squad. Yes, you will. Because you deserve it. And because you're smarter than the old boys in this world. Anybody order a pizza in here? David! I, I Hi. came as soon as I could. I thought you might want me to be here. How are you, Mary Beth? Any word yet? No, not yet. Well, we'll wait together. You do. All the way from Brooklyn? I was nearby anyway. I figured it was yours and Charlie's favorite. Come on, let's dig in. Seven o'clock. It's going down now. Detective Lacey, 14th. No, no, ma'am. Um, Detective Hernandez does not come on until uh, midnight. OK. Lurking into the balcony. <laughs> Pizza. Oh, the way to a woman's heart. <laughs> He's a good catch, Christine. I feel like a beached whale. Harvey and I were in this little pizza place when it hit me for the first time that I was in love with him. He looked at me over the candlelight and said, Another slice, babe. I know that doesn't sound like much, but the way he said it, I knew he loved me, too. It's the first time he ever called me babe. And there was in his voice this gentleness and passion. And they had a jukebox, and you would not believe what started playing right then and there. I got you, babe. Sonny and Cher? Yeah. And so that became our song. You know, we used to play it on the hi-fi and uh, dance to it on our anniversary and stuff until Sonny and Cher broke up. That kind of took the romance out of it. When we first got married, we celebrated our anniversary every month. And we would dance to that song. Don't do that to your hair. You got a brush? No. 
Well, when Harvey gets here, we want him to look at you and say, you look delicious, babe. <laughs> How do you think Cher says looking so good? Huh? Do I know? <laughs> Something's happened, I know it. Anyway, it's a swell green says there. to him, and I ain't going to say, how the hell I am going to say, sure is cold in here if I get into trouble. So he's going to go He says, my wife, what? my wife is a home wrecker. No. Homemaker. <laughs> <laughs> so what does Swansky say? He wants to become my buddy. He does. Harvey. He loves me. Harvey. <laughs> it went like clockwork. Now they're booking him right now. Miss me, babe. Lieutenant Thornton is in charge, Sergeant. He's in my office. I know it. I will not be made a lame duck by you. If you've got an attitude towards me, fine. But don't take it out of my partner. You're yelling at Michael. You're yelling at me. If we had a dog, you'd be kicking it. I am not shutting down, Mary Beth. I am not running scared. Why don't you worry about the problems in your own relationships? He's your husband, Mary Beth. Nobody's going to do a good enough job. He found out the man was going to the cops, and he stabbed him to death. Unless I deal with this, that is what is going to happen. Wrong answer, Mr. Trey. Hey, easy, Detective. Here and now, I am ticked. Just nail this sucker. Smooth sail from here on in, Mary Beth. The brass is gonna sit up and take notice of this. Chris, you sure you gotta need all this stuff? First rule of leadership, Mary Beth, be prepared. I thought that was the Boy Scouts. Yeah. You have any idea when the lieutenant's gonna be back? 
Well, this is something about a special detail. Very hush hush. Yeah, coffee, sarge, and cagney, no cream, two sugar. Thank you. You know what I always say? A woman's place is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Esposito, cup of coffee for Detective Lacey, please. Black. Can do. Thank you. Christine, I picked up this book. Gourmet uh, uh, garnishing for the working woman. No, for our dinner party Friday. Oh, yes? This Friday? Me and Harvey, you and David, the double date? Oh, yes. Anyhow, this book, it shows you how you can take squash and make it look like little swans. And your tomatoes, Christine, you can take tomatoes and make uh, them look like a bouquet of roses. Right, but you don't have to make a big fuss. I could feed David Keeler for the rest of his life, Christine, and never fully repay him for saving me from that review board. I mean, I feel like a criminal not doing it sooner. I should have done it in October, but then uh, you and me got sick and all that business with Harvey Jr. and the holidays. It's soon enough. It's Friday. Right. Excuse me. Sorry, Cagney, but the lieutenant squad reports are due first thing. It could rain paperwork, Coleman. It wouldn't ruin my parade. Yeah, well, good luck behind the wheel. Don't drive us off the cliff. Radio. Home. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah! The sweet smell of success, Marybeth, huh? To us. Nothing wrong with this picture, right? How are you tending? Inspector. Inspector Lacey. Good morning, sir. All right, Cadney, listen, I'm glad I caught you before, well, before you got the wrong idea. The wrong idea, Inspector? Uh, let me introduce myself. Lieutenant Jim Thornton. Lieutenant Thornton? I've heard good things, Detective Lacey. <laughs> and about you too, Sergeant. Oh, well, thank you, Lieutenant. It's nice to meet you. Lieutenant Thornton here will be holding the reins in Samuel's absence. Uh, temporarily, of course. I don't know. I don't understand. He's a top instructor at the Academy. Just submitted a study to the department, the paradigm of the high-tech precinct. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's very interesting, Inspector. And I thought it would be a good time to give his ideas a try around here. Don't you think it would be wiser if you had someone in command who had a working knowledge of this squad, Inspector? I wasn't aware I had to consult a second whip for my administrative decisions. Especially if your second whip is a woman. Lieutenant Thornton is in charge, Sergeant. End of discussion. Jim, Detective. Sir? You know, Sergeant, I don't need this room right away. I could go get a cup of coffee, interface with the squad, familiarize myself. No problem. Really, I'll be out of your way in just a minute. in my office. I know it. The second whip always fills the temporary slot. But he's here, Christine. We have to learn to live with it. High tech precinct my butt. <laughs> that guy wouldn't recognize a perp if he were handcuffed and had numbers painted across his chest. Christine, one day when you're captain, we'll look back on this and laugh. It's all perspective. My sponsor says to live in the here and now. Well, here and now, I am ticked. Okay, babe, throw the breaker. Okay. Hola. Oh, Harvey. Huh? This is wonderful. You know what would be perfect? I'll pick up amber colored bulbs. It's such a warm glow. Yeah, I don't know how you stand that midtown gridlock every day, Mary, but the week of it, I'm ready to strangle anyone leaning on your horn. Okay, this is how we start. Bright and cheerful with the appetizer, get the conversation going. Yeah, do you know how many permits I needed just to break ground in Manhattan? And deliveries? Forget about it. Well, it'll be nice to watch the numbers add up in the bank, though, huh? Should I make rumaki or pate? Live is liver, whether you wrap it or grind it. I don't know, I'm taking it more, but it doesn't go in my pocket. You should see the rental prices on the equipment. Hey, aren't you the one that always says headaches go with the territory? Yeah. Now, we turn it down a little more uh -huh. for the main course. And we light the candles. Yeah, don't get the scented ones, all right? 
Then when you find a company that's not committing a highway robbery, the equipment is all screwed up. Yesterday, a track on a bulldozer wouldn't move. This morning, a crane wouldn't start. You're right, Hart. Classic white tape is... Yeah. A little stress goes with success. A little too much with this job. Okay, and what do you think of this? For dessert. Hey, don't get too much in the mood here, Mary Beth. This is a thank you dinner, not the grand seduction. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You start playing footsies under the table, and I better feel my toes tingling. Mm-hmm. And this here... That's very romantic. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> mm. mm. Set your toe, Mr. Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> Becky? Jordan. Good. Parasa. Lieutenant, I've been reading your paper, and quite frankly, sir, I can't put it down. This is inspirational. It's illuminating. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, Detective Esposito, isn't it? E-S-P-O-S-I-T-O. Good. Sergeant Cagney, a moment with you about assignments, please. Detective Lacey, excellent. Sit down, Detective. Let's file this under BS, huh? Did you see how fast he went through these activity reports? Would have taken seven. It was twice the time. I don't trust any cop who carries a gun in a briefcase. Or carries a briefcase. Excuse me. I'm looking for Victor Isbeck. In the flesh. How can I help you? My name is Mordechai Spekovich. I'm your cousin from Tel Aviv. Look, this is absolutely ridiculous. Both my parents were Catholic. Victor, why would I lie to you? You and me are the end of the line. We are all that's left of our family. Mister, this is a pretty sick joke. My father did not have any brothers or sisters. You wanted nothing to do with my father. You see, when the Nazis came into Poland, our grandfather, Joseph, was killed by the Gestapo. Your father and my father watched him die. After Joseph's death, your father insisted the rest of the family flee to America. My father thought it wouldn't last, that they would be safe. My father died during the war. Your father came here, got married, had you. He was Catholic. I saw his old passport. Probably bought it on the black market. They were blocking the exit of Jews. I wouldn't have come at all, but you see, last year my mother, God bless her, passed away. Then I learned of your mother's death, too. We are just you and me. I am merely suggesting that there may be an alternate, potentially more effective means of approaching any given case. Well, if you would merely peruse your data, I think you would see that this squad is doing fine just the way it is. Are you saying there's no room for improvement? You're probably wondering what we're doing on this pathetic case. Now you're thinking, why did my partner, a reasonably bright woman who saw a future in the police department, get us assigned to the silliest, most insignificant case since Aunt Tilly lost her wedding ring? I was sure you'd get around to filling me in. Yeah, well, when an overeducated potato like Thornton tells me that our precinct appears lax and old-fashioned, I get a little excited. Lax, Mary Beth, can you believe that? I lost my wedding ring once down the sink in the old apartment, and Harvey had to take apart all the pipes. There's no and, substitute and... for procedure, he said. Detectives don't use the full resources of their department, only on the flashy cases, he said. The little cases, well, you handle them out on the streets, and then you lose them in a file room. 
We do all tend to jump at the homicides. So I leaned over that destiny has no right to sit behind. And I said, flashy cases and little cases, we handle them all the same in this squad. And we handle them out on the street because that's how real police work is done. Not in front of some sickly green computer screen. Right. This ought to be his corner here. Give me the first uncleared case you can punch up, I said. And Detective Lacey and I will solve it out on the streets long before you can rearrange your floppy disks. So he punched and uh, here we are. Mr. Romanos, NYPD, sir. You reported a missing hot dog cart. I told you once, I told you twice, Michael. I don't want to hear any more excuses. Get to your room. What is going on, Harvey? I come home from work. The kid has got every light in the house on. I could hear you all the way out in the driveway. Who do you think is paying the bills around here, huh? I don't want to hear any more excuses. Honey, please, try not to go crazy. Crazy? Look who's talking. You're burning enough for all of us with your big dinner for the hotshot lawyer. What are you talking about? I'm talking about mood lighting. I'm talking about 80 bucks a piece for champagne. Honey, you told me yourself, get something nice. I mean, David Keeler saved us $5,000. I didn't think you were going to spend it all on dinner, and you shouldn't even be having champagne with Chris here. I asked her already. She, she, she can deal with other people drinking. Is there anything else you'd like to jump down my throat about? Well, it depends on what's next. Maybe you want to redo the wallpaper to match the crown roast. What is with you, Harvey? You're yelling at Michael, you're yelling at me. If we had a dog, you'd be kicking it. Now, this is about more than a, a few extra light bulbs and a fancy dinner. What's wrong, Harv? Nothing. Well, it doesn't look like nothing from my corner of the ring. I don't want to talk about it, Mary, but leave it, okay? Okay. So? What's going on at work? Nothing. I'll handle it myself. Handle what, Harv? Is it labor troubles? Are we going to lose the contract? It's my problem! Honey, if you have a problem, I have a problem, too. I'll deal with it myself. <laughs> 